How many titles do you see Steph Curry winning over the next four years? You know what? I, I, I hate to say this right now, but I don't see the Golden State Warriors bringing home another championship. Golden State will win the championship. That's bold, huh? Yeah. They know what time it is. Four times. Four times. That's right. Hey, my boy said it. What they gonna say now, man? Does it, does it deserve the term dynasty? Well, four in eight years, uh, 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 you know, dynasty, because uh, what's scary. Recalculating. No, no, you know, you got, you had, you, you know what, you, you know what. Recalculating. So how many titles do you see these Warriors winning moving forward? I don't know, but we don't get paid off no damn predictions. I got the Warriors repeating. They are winning the NBA championship again next year. This time next year, Steph Curry will surpass LeBron James. This was 9 out of 10 journalists and simps after the Warriors came out on top and won the 2022 NBA championship. Simps, or my terminology for sports media personalities, had to retract the bad takes they made during the year, after which they finally capitulated and went back to the drawing board after Stephen Curry and his crew of misfits ran through the league. A lot of people tend to forget that Stephen Curry has always been the poster child of underrated kids everywhere. Rejected by D1 schools, 5 NBA teams, and even Nike. Three championships, multiple MVPs, including the only ever unanimous MVP, as well as a finals MVP to go with his all-NBA and all-star accolades, and 13 years later, he was still doubted. But this barely scratches the surface of what Stephen Curry has accomplished with this Golden State Warriors team this year. The goal in any sport has always been to win, and to win at the highest level takes skill beyond that which can be visibly expressed to your peers. The intricate understanding it takes to win at this level requires more than game IQ, it also requires interplayer IQ. How well do you know your teammates? How well can you play with them? How do you make them better? By the time I'm through with this video, I expect my comment section to be filled with comments saying this video is cap, but I hear your opinion and raise you truth and facts. If you don't like the facts, this channel isn't for you. I can't blame you guys for having been misled by mainstream media for the latter part of the new millennia. I apologize for having to be the one to inform you that 99% of what you've been listening to is absolute junk and straight trash. Toss it out with the garbage and don't look back because what you're witnessing right now is the advent of the new media. Basketball has changed and only those willing to embrace it will be able to stand up in the new era. If you're not in alignment and have a negative recency bias against the Warriors because you can't appreciate in real time the true absurdity of what's been accomplished with Curry at the helm because the media has taught you to love and only appreciate LeBron James, then you will be left behind. I mean, they even have a paid shell to hate LBJ, so many of you guys can love him that much more. I have a lot of respect for LeBron, but I also come from a very scientific and objective background with my analyses. You don't have to like my results, but you will respect it. Get ready, because I'm about to shred every narrative you've ever heard about why Stephen Curry is any less of a player than LeBron James. By the time I'm through, you will know why the Warriors were so easily able to crush the league in a year they had a team rebuild. The old school media was loud and clear when Kevin Durant left and the Warriors ended up with Andrew Wiggins. It's over for them now. We will never see Steph in another NBA Finals, ever. They were especially loud last year as the Warriors fell short of the playoffs in 2021. I love Bob Myers. He's just not being aggressive right now in the offseason, and he's not making moves. We watched the Lakers attack free agency. Sadly to say, I don't see Steph Curry and the Warriors winning another championship. Check out my video on the Warriors 2022 NBA championship run for a breakdown of a number of simps that had to feast on some humble pie. So now we know the stage is set. Curry's expectations were low, but expected. After all, even LeBron James has needed another superstar to help him win every single championship. Let's step back just a bit here to LeBron's tenure with the Cavs. After seven years, the Cavs clearly weren't able to build a team around LeBron. But was this because of the franchise, or was it because LeBron never actually made other players better despite how good he was supposed to be? He supposedly made his teammates better, but somehow just had the putrid luck of his entire supporting cast from 2003 all the way up to 2010 be nothing but absolute busts. Again, 
This isn't an insult to LBJ, but we're building a case here for the narrative to fit the reality. The consensus was that Curry needed that other superstar and that the ball and chain that is Andrew Wiggins would drag Steph Curry's career down to the Sims projection. That is, top 20, maybe top 15 player of all time, despite at the time having only one list championship ring, the number two ranked LeBron James. Also at this point, Curry was the best player on his team for at least two of those three championship years. I'm being generous in giving 2017 to KD as he had better numbers only for the final series for that year. If you don't think I'm being generous, hang around till I get to the part where I explain why it's completely asinine to judge a player's performance based on their box scores. In the case of LeBron James and Kevin Durant, Sims tried to pursue a narrative that never really existed. Was Kevin Durant having been making his way back when LeBron had teamed up with Wade, at which point there was no doubt James was initially the second option considering the fact that Wade was already a champion. The media was looking for a rivalry. KD and LeBron were already predetermined to be the two best players, East versus West. These narratives weren't to be changed overnight. Let's start in 2012. Was this Heat team stacked? Yes. LeBron went to a team that had already won a championship with its first option still in prime years. Chris Bosh added a third dimension to the team, which made quick work of KD and Westbrook, despite Westbrook putting up a 43-point performance, leading all scorers in a Game 4 loss. Durant did not make the finals the following year, or at any time since then before going to Golden State, and the Heat instead took on the Spurs the next two years. This time, the Heat went even further, acquiring Ray Allen to the 2013 squad. Lewis had already made nearly $150 million over his career and said he had little debate in taking less to come to Miami. For Allen, the decision was more complicated. If this wasn't a super team, I don't know what is. Absolutely none of these players were drafted aside from Wade. This is picking talent that's already been established, essentially an assembly of the best players in the league to win a ring. I mean, they don't even do this in grade school. The two best players were automatically captains in gym class. We all went through this at some point or another. Now, imagine if those two captains teamed up. Exactly, the game becomes pointless. Imagine if LeBron actually made these guys better and Chris Bosh turned into KG, Wade turned into Michael Jordan, and Ray Allen started shooting like Steph Curry. This same team went up against the Spurs team with Ginobili, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, and Kawhi Leonard in 2013. Won the series in seven games, but lost the following year. The big difference being the emergence of Kawhi Leonard as LeBron with a stacked team was still unable to take down an aging Tim Duncan with an unestablished Kawhi Leonard. Both teams were, dare I say, evenly matched with regards to their supporting cast. This again is one tidbit as to why raw scores and stats don't mean anything when it comes to determining the better player. Despite finishing with 28 points per game, 8 rebounds and 4 assists with 2 steals, the finals MVP went to Kawhi Leonard who averaged 18 points per game, 6 rebounds and 2 assists. So let's put this narrative to rest. LeBron is a great player, but he does not make his teammates better. The two concepts can be mutually exclusive. Kevin Durant, on the other hand, faced the same issue as LeBron. Individually great players that can get theirs, but when it comes to their teammates, success becomes a rare and foreign concept. The major difference between the two is that LeBron is more of a coach on the floor. Run wide, y'all running the ceiling in the paint. JR, go, bump down, JR, go, bump, bump, bump down. While KD is more of an only option instead of even a first option, neither player has shown the capacity to utilize their teammates to the best of their abilities. We've seen Kevin Love go from scoring 26 and 13 to dropping 16 and 8. The difference? He went from being a first option on his own team to playing next to LeBron. When Durant went to the Warriors, he went from being a first option to a team that didn't really prioritize a first option. The team adapted to allow KD's style of play to fit the lineup. They allowed him to get his touches and while it worked, the fact that KD played his own offense somewhat hurt the Warriors while improving KD's individual production numbers. With the all media narrative in the minds of these guys, Curry included, the better player opened the floor for KD to be able to operate with more spacing and freedom than he ever had elsewhere. This only worked while KD shared the floor with Curry. If you watch the games that KD plays without Curry, the Warriors were not usually the better team. Durant going off for 51 points against the Raptors in an overtime special was a spectacle for sure, but that does not translate to wins if you don't play the right way. As a team sport, basketball is about the only sport that emphasizes points over player impact, 
And I cannot emphasize enough how incorrect of an approach this is. A player who facilitates winning will always be more important than a player who just puts up stats. Ask Luca how he felt about his stats being compared to the great Michael Jordan. I don't know, just, you know, there's a lot of stats going on, you know, a little bit too much stats, you know. Too much stats, you know. Too much stats. Point differential is more important than total points, and it's because of this why box scores are practically useless metrics to compare outside of a single game. Honestly, ask yourself, which of these two is the better player? So, what can we conclude up to this point? LeBron in his championship years had his teams assembled with at least one other superstar. Kevin Durant won his only chip with Stephen Curry, and whether you give the nod to KD or Steph as to who was the better player, only one has won a ring without the other. And not just one ring, Four times. What this means is that on the totem pole of the three greatest players currently active in basketball, only one has managed to win a ring without teaming up with another superstar prior to 2022. The problem is, even though Curry was listed here with these guys, he wasn't exactly considered to be one of them. LeBron and KD were ballers, Stephen Curry wasn't. Curry was that kid that would arrive at the gym and no one would pick him based on his looks. He uses his teammates to get a screen advantage and pulls the trigger from deep. Meanwhile, the other players are like, who is this shot heaving, ball screening, undersized runt? If he was on the team, the coach would bench him immediately for taking those shots. So in a group of three, how could this guy, the one they picked last, win a championship without signing another superstar? There were talks around the league of the Warriors trading their 7th and 14th pick along with Wiggins for an established player to run alongside Curry. If the Warriors didn't do it, they were risking Curry's future. There were even talks of Curry leaving if they didn't sign another superstar to go alongside him. The media tried selling this to Golden State because it would make them right while making the Warriors franchise feel as if they have no choice but to make a trade. So let's see, KD teamed up with Kyrie and Harden, LeBron has AD, Westbrook, Melo, Rondo, Howard, and budding superstar THT. Okay, well maybe THT wasn't a budding superstar. Curry has bust Wiggins and triple single Draymond. Clay was injured so no threat there. How will the Warriors even compete? It's not even that the Warriors weren't signing star players. The Warriors were actually in the act of rebuilding the team. Instead of finding established players to put alongside Curry to go for a championship run, the Dubs instead utilized their two lottery picks to select young players to develop. To develop. This is insane. But that's not all. Let's not forget that the year prior, the Warriors had drafted James Wiseman at number two another long-term prospect. That's three spots on the roster that would have been filled with veterans on any other championship team. But no, not the dubs. We're doubling down. But what about Jordan Poole? He was in the G League last year, right? The kid needs some more development. Shouldn't we trade him? No, not a chance. As a matter of fact, in Clay's place, we'll be inserting Jordan Poole into the starting lineup. Anyone looking from the outside would think this team is ridiculous. They look like the new post-Rust, post-PG, Oklahoma City Thunder with Steph Curry in the middle. Kevon Looney is a backup big who will have to play in the starter's role until Wiseman can develop enough to play the starting spot. Yes, this is insanity. How is this team supposed to compete against any team that comes out of the West? Worse, a team like the Lakers that is currently stacked with veterans. To be fair, a lot of people thought the Lakers roster was past its prime. The players were too old, but that didn't stop them from being ranked near the top by ESPN and that did not stop LeBron James from ranking them near the top like ESPN. Through all this, the Warriors acquired Kuminga, Moody, Wiseman, and Poole, a formidable young group of guys any team in the league would love to have as their main unit going forward. The Warriors picked up a few stray veterans including Porter Jr. from the Bulls, Peyton, whom no other team would even sign from the G League, as well as Bielita, an undersized big with no athleticism from the Heat, after he was briefly traded there from the Kings, mind you. This ragtag bunch of no-names then ran through the league with a hobbling clay and Wiseman in tow and finished with the third best record in the Western Conference regular season. Led by Stephen Curry, they proceeded to decimate teams in each playoff series, spotting the other team a win before taking it home and punishing the opponent for thinking the matchup would be even close. Every single step of the way, pundits were sure to call the game for every team not named the Warriors. 
The Nuggets were supposed to win in round one. When they didn't, the Grizzlies were sure to make it happen in round two. After that failed, the Mavs had the secret sauce. And after three failures, it was another trip to the finals for the Warriors. Boston had the defensive player of the year and ran through the Nets, Bucks, and Heat. They should dispatch this bunch of misfits from the Golden State, right? It took six games for the Warriors to lock up and shut down the Boston operation. With Curry going on a three-point bomb-dropping marathon in TD Garden, the Simps watched as that shot-heaving, ball-screening, undersized runt blew Boston into oblivion. Stephen Curry let the media believe that in order to win in this era, you need a super team, or at least another superstar to team up with, then blew up that narrative by winning without one. Again! It isn't every day that you get to watch something so epic unfold. A championship and a developing young core. Yes, the Warriors obliterated the league and completed an early rebuild while doing it. Winning isn't scoring 30 points per game. It's about outscoring your opponent. You need to look no further than the Warriors' last championship for proof of this concept. Let me know in the comments if you think the Warriors can get better and win another championship next year, or if this was just a fluke and they won't even make the playoffs. Is Curry top 10 or is he top 5? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, swish. Can't need a shit cock word, I'm a player, the real player. I don't give a prayer, man, fuck a naysayer. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved.